So my name is Mark Reed. I am a nuclear engineer, and I really like neutron. So I grew up in a, a fairly small town on the outskirts of Seattle and Western Washington. This place is called Woodenville, and it was a great place. Uh, there's lots of wood there in Woodenville. There's lots of trees, lots of evergreens, lots of. I grew up kind of on a in a semi-rural area, with lots of animals everywhere. Lots of uh, my town is actually known for basset hounds. Um, so I started pursuing nuclear engineering basically a couple years after I came to MIT uh, as an undergraduate student. Um, prior to coming to MIT, I was kind of undecided about what I wanted to do. When I came here, I knew I wanted to do physics and some kind of engineering, but I really didn't know what kind. And so I really liked physics, and so I fig eventually figured that kind of on a whim, the nuclear engineering is like a really good way to directly apply physics to real world applications. I like physics, I like all the theory, but I don't want to be the person who's just kind of sitting around and doing theory all day long with it. It doesn't actually apply to anything useful. So I figured nuclear engineering is a good way to use the theory of physics that I like and like directly apply it to like real world applications to actually make the world a better place, if that's not too cliche. So in the history of nuclear technology, the person who I probably respect the most, well this probably isn't any one person, but I guess the name that comes to mind is probably Leo Szilard. And he was a Hungarian-American physicist who was involved in like the very early research uh, discovering the actual process of fission. And at first, when people discovered fission, uh, it was just this, you know, it was this new exciting discovery in physics, and it was like any other exciting discovery in physics. But then Leo Szilard was really the first one who realized its potential morbid applications and realized that this is something that could be uh, used in a way that was very uh, barbaric and very violent. And so he was really the first one who kind of got other people involved, like Albert Einstein, who had, by that time, he achieved like a very big iconic status as a scientist and had a lot of clout with people. And uh, really, so Leo Szilard kind of got brought people together and got the political ball rolling uh, to really do something about it. And that was basically what led to the formation of the Manhattan Project. So I think I would, if I hadn't been a nuclear engineer, I'd probably be something along the lines of an historian or a political scientist or a writer. I was actually a lot more interested in that, in that stuff, particularly history and geography, like well before I ever even knew that I liked science and engineering or even knew what higher math was or anything like that. Um, but I guess at the end of high school was when I kind of had developed this dual interest in on the one hand, you know, writing political science, history, humanities, and on the other hand, you know, science engineering. And uh, it just so happened that I got the amazing opportunity to come to MIT and so I decided to go uh, the route of science and engineering. First memory of technology and the internet was probably in the early 90s. I guess that was elementary school age right now, like most millennials would be. And uh, Windows 3.1 machine, I played Chips Challenge, and it was incredibly addicting. Yes, the millennial generation is the first generation that has really like grown up and come of age with uh, the internet. And it's, you know, it's a great thing for our ability to communicate with one another, to keep in touch with one another, and to learn information like very rapidly. You know, it used to be that you had to actually go to a, like physically go to a school, physically take a class, physically go to a library to learn something. But the internet has kind of leveled the playing field that anyone, you know, if you don't have any money or any access to education, you can go online, you can learn stuff. The millennial generation is different than other generations. The main thing is really the internet, how that's changed the way we communicate with each other. Um, I feel like the internet, again, it's great for, you know, equal access to knowledge, very quick access to knowledge, very quick communication, keeping in touch with lots of different people all over the world. Um, but it's also has introduced kind of an impersonal element to our communication. And it really has, the other thing is it really has changed the way privacy works. Um, as it used to be, you can kind of do something offensive and then you know go somewhere else and no one knows about it anymore. With the internet, it really never goes away. We think it might go away in the internet, but it really doesn't actually go away.